so excited to ask you about the big reveal in the finale. I'm just going to, I want to just jump right into that. So first off with Max's big reveal at the end, when did you first find out what was going to happen to him? Are you getting scripts throughout the season or did they give you that kind of blueprint right at the start? So there's a lot of stuff that I find out literally when we get the scripts delivered. I'm quite literally the last to know. Very grateful that I've known that I was getting the power for a very long time. And I have not told anybody. I didn't even really tell the cast. I think Jane knew, um, of course. But uh, it was something that Austin told me even before we started season two. Um, And it wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. And it was a question of, is the network going to go for it? And I know that they had always gone for for it from its initial idea land and pitch land and outline land. But, you know, things change and, you know, you get the script. And if the network or the studio is like, I'm not buying it, it's too soon, I don't, I'm not into it. I was always really worried that that could and would happen. So I... I, I was more like hanging on to a secret that I never fully believed until we actually filmed it. And so um, that was interesting for me because I was just like, is this really gonna happen? Am I really gonna get the power? And when I actually saw it in writing and the read through then went well, and then I got the next draft and it was still in there. And then we was actually the day to film it. I'm like, I'm getting the power, I'm so excited. And then once Jane started learning, I'll melt with you, you know, it was, it was weird, the, wheel, the wheels were turning even when it's not official, 100% happening, but you're aware that it that it likely will or that Austin wants it to happen, that moment when you learn about it, does it, I guess, does it still influence the character at all, kind of knowing that that's the roadmap? I loved, I loved hitting home the theme with Zoe and Max that there's this power imbalance and that it's so unfair that you can know what's going on in my head and I have no way. When people rewatch episode uh, season two, that is going to come, that comes up, up a lot. Like it even comes up in passing, like in that scene that I was talking about in our other interview where I was freezing and, and, and trying to talk to her about when she was kind of engaging with Simon. And I was say like, Hey, that always messed with me. The fact that you could hear my thoughts and I couldn't like, I don't know. I don't know if that's helpful for a relationship. Um, and it was really something that he had to get over. Uh, and now it's something that he has to completely cope with. And, and it's a blessing and a curse as we've seen for Zoe. So now that Max has it as well, um, it might, it might get interesting moving forward. I was going back after I learned that big finish there and I, I found it peppered all throughout the season, like you said, but I just, like, I couldn't believe how, when it actually happened the first time I watched the finale, what it, what a shock it was. I just like, why didn't I think that that was ever going to happen? I know it's something that's right in front of your face, but you never expect it. And that's why I really wanted people to watch the finale live. And it's kind of a community viewing thing because it's like, we're going to do something. We're going to, everyone thinks it's like team Max or team Simon, what's going to happen and who's she going to choose. And it's like, Hey, there's other things that are going to happen that are going to like another kind of cliffhanger. It's not, it doesn't end with Max on the plane. And like, is he going to, is he going to go or not? Like we've solved that. We're, we're, we're moving forward with that. But now here's another wrench in the game. Speaking of the plane stuff, so one moment we don't get to see in the finale is the conversation that Max has with Rose. Do you just to get in his headspace and to connect the dots between, you know, the scene before and then the final scene with Zoe, do you need to at least flesh that moment out and figure out how that conversation happened for you? Yeah, Katie Finlay and I met actually off off work and we just did an improv of what that conversation. I'm kidding. Can you imagine? That would be so adorable. I Wait, by the way, by the way, and Katie like, would actually be so anything. down. <laughs> by the way, I'm sure if Katie's watching this interview, she'd be like, why didn't we do that? That would have been so fun. Um, she's an absolute delight to work with and is so great playing Rose. And I mean, I, I think that it's, it's, it's kind of covered as far as what that, what that conversation would go like. And he says in his scene with Zoe that, you know, she could tell I had someone else on my mind and it wasn't fair to her or me or anyone involved. And I agree. I mean, I think Rose is like an unbelievable person. It was actually really good for Max. So I think that scene in the kitchen in the finale really just changes things. Um, Zoe's, Zoe's always been Max's first love. And there was always just something keeping them apart. And I didn't know if Max was ever gonna get that. 
uh, from, from Zoe. And Jane just does such an unbelievable job throughout the whole episode, throughout the whole series and season. But like, especially throughout the finale, just like, that's a tough thing. That's a lot of ground to cover for an actor um, to have a breakup and have these thoughts. And I buy it. I watched it. I, I buy it hook, line and sinker. I think they're actually set up for success. There's something extra special, more meaningful and more believable about it that that decision happened before the reveal of the power too. it's like I was trying yeah. to play through what it would be like if it was reversed and one came before the other. And I, I don't know, there might be too many holes in the equation or, or too many, uh, too many question marks there. I agree. I mean, it's like there's a finality to I hate saying her choice or her decision because ne- no, none of us. Team Max, Team Simon, Team Zoe, Team Rose. No one's a prize or anything like that, but something that was holding her back and something that she was never even able to say in that kitchen scene at Maximo, just don't go. And having Peter kind of hit the nail in the coffin is so is so important for Zoe's journey, I think, for her to just know unequivocally, like, this is the right man for me and I'd be foolish to let him go. And then on top of that, she says it from her heart and then something that she can't fake some is a heart song. All of our characters... We can't hide what we're feeling. It's our full subconscious. So if audiences were ever like, I don't know if Zoe really means it. I don't know if Zoe really wants it. I don't know if Zoe um, should be with Max. If she's not ready, the heart doesn't lie. And so the fact that we got the window into that, I think is actually a really important device for the audience and for Max to know like this is for real. What do you know? I assume there's no season three scripts yet. So again, do you have the blueprint of what Austin's hoping to do moving forward? I have a vague idea. You know what I have? I have more his, I have more my conversations with him that I do the talking and he goes, that's interesting. Yeah, I like it all. You know, and then he takes it to his genius factory and like marinates on it. I think also like, he likes to keep a couple things close to his vest and I'm not kind of an opportunist who wants to like know for knowing sake. I just like to kind of have those nerdy conversations. I think that there is personally where like area that we could cover now that Max is the power really says something about like, what if I hear a song from somebody and Zoe hears a completely other song from that person? And what does that say about certain constructs what does that say about relationships about listening there's just so many i love when our show gets cerebral and when we delve into the power because it just says a lot about human nature through this really cool device and now that two people harness it you could even say more it just opens so much more you kind of clarified one other question i had and and i think that i got the sense that it was this this one way where both of you have the power so it's definitely not that the power was transferred from one to the other That I don't know, actually. That I'm assuming just like you probably are. I mean, again, that's something that like I've mentioned to Austin and I don't know, like, and by the way, I'm not going to now just start like revealing completely how the sausage is made, but just to give you like three full universes um, for season three, I could personally, and I don't know the answer to this. I could see a world where Max only has it. I could see a world where they both have it. I could also see a world where Max only has it and then Zoe gets it back and then they both have it and then only Max and they're fighting over it. You know what I mean? Like, and now actually Zoe, when she thought that she never wanted this power and was running away, misses it and needs it back. And it's actually her search for the power and she now resents Max for it. Like there's so many areas to go and you could actually kind of do a mixture of all of them or none of them. Um, And that is above my pay grade. That is not my job, but um, I care so much. And like, I love playing those kinds of stories out. So I'm, I'm really interested to see where this series goes. You, you make me feel a lot better about my mind spinning out of control with the possibilities after. And you know, it, it just speaks to you guys caring so much about the product here and also just how utterly engaging it is. And after two seasons, I just, I deeply care about all of these characters and need to know everything that's going to happen to them. This might be another seemingly silly question, but before Max breaks it off with Rose, how far into the airport do they get? I was just curious if he went through security. We were curbside checking in when we, when we were doing the, when a man loves a woman song. I, I know I'm so you and I are so similar probably when we watch shows because it's so logistical. It's content. There's continuity issues. There's like, 
I'm did his bag get lost? Did he have to like say goodbye? She gets on the plane and he waits at baggage claim for his own thing. Did he have to get his bag shipped back? Like, how did that work? I'd say just for my own neuroses as Skylar, like he didn't get through security. Not to put you on the spot. That's not where my mind was going, but that probably would have been the next step because I am like a little nutty when it comes to lost baggage and it not transferring over to the right plane. The question yeah. came from, did he go through security and there was a glitch in the machine? Like there was a glitch in the MR, MRI machine or like what, what is the thing that gave him the power? Is it their connection or a piece of technology? Well, great question. <laughs> we haven't gone into it. I only can assume it's not radioactive um, because I, I believe in, um, in that dream having a lot to do with the transfer. Uh, with Mitch and I think the affirmation of Mitch being the person that she's always looking up and questioning to the universe. I always believe that uh, the power not only came from the MRI machine, but it was also a coping mechanism, obviously. And I know Jane believes that it really has to do so much with her father. So bringing back that kind of almost godlike figure now with Peter, I think is really useful, a cool device. And I think it has to do with that. I think it has to do with maybe her fully letting go and her fully being vulnerable. Who knows if we start season three with the damn x-ray machine, bring Katie Finlay back and I'm checking in and I, you know, this is it. I have no idea. I, 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 again, like I'm an audience member when it comes to that. I only know as much as we're given and uh, everything you saw. I mean, we're, we're up to date now, you and I and the audience. This is the kind of stuff that I absolutely love thinking about though. Same. I got one more for you here. And again, this might sound kind of silly, but now that you might be heading towards having to do more of this in the show, what do you find more challenging? Being a part of one of the big elaborate heart song set pieces or having to be the observer in one of those? Well, I've only been the observer twice in I'm Yours and now I'll Melt With You. And I love, I love how Jane plays all of her stuff. And I'm, I'm interested as an actor to kind of like delve into that and what it means to have a relationship. Cause I truly believe, and I've said this before that like every song we've ever done on the show is a duet because Jane is just as much a part of those songs as um, the person singing it. So I'm interested, I'm excited to kind of get into the theory the way Jane does um, about why this is happening and why she's hearing this song at this time. Um, Something that I really love doing that I probably won't be able to do, or maybe we could, again, we don't know, is what I did in Don't Stop Me Now and Jealous, where I'm literally stretching and doing quad stretches while there's an entire flash, you know, the group number happening around me. Those are actually my favorite because I'm not engaged in what's happening. I'm not the one singing. I'm just some guy who has no clue that things are going on around me. That's like my favorite thing to play because I get to play against the moment, which is fun. Um, but I'm real. I, I'm so excited like about the challenges and the rewards of be having a front row seat and and receiving it and being active in those scenes as well. So um, I get the best of all worlds. I'm very lucky. I am so pumped for you guys. Like even just like sitting here theorizing for a little is getting me so hyped for what's to come, but got to celebrate season two. And I cannot congratulate you and the team enough. I hope, I mean, everybody who's with us at this point has watched it and they know how special the show is, but just in case everybody out there has someone else in their lives that has, have not seen any of the show, make sure you tell them like, what is wrong with you? It's all streaming on Hulu. And it is just so utterly heartwarming, delightful, the complete package. I would be shocked if anybody out there pushed play and didn't have a massive smile on their face and walk away with their heart full. So hopefully that's enough of an endorsement to get you guys to talk about it even more. Skylar, I meant everything I said. Huge congratulations. I love the show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.